NLCS, game five. Uh, we take the lead. We're up 7 nothing, And uh, late in the game, Dave Veras hits you in the head, and you go to take him out. So what was going through, besides the baseball, what was going through your head at that point <laughs> in time, Jay? But, I mean, is that something that was just the height of, uh, of that series and the intensity around it, or do you think there was something intentional there? Um, well, I talked to a few veteran people after that that said he was probably – trying to send a message to me as a young guy. I apparently, they said, I, I guess I swung out of my shoes or something, maybe the pitch before that. And, you know, but I'm not a big fan of head hunting. And when you get hit, you know, it's like getting sucker punch, you know. You either, there's either two things you do. You either stay down or you get up ready to fight. And after I got hit in the head, I got up ready to fight. And fortunately, in the back of my mind, I'm like, hey, you know what? we're going to the world series. If I got to take a 90 mile an hour fastball to my face to get to the world series and they were going home, I'll do it every time. That's the spirit. Uh, you, you get to the world series, Jay, you had a three run homer off uh, Mariano uh, game two. You guys lost the game, but you're one of two players that's ever homered off uh, Mo in the postseason. Uh, what did that moment mean to you? And, and how'd you get him? Did you just leave one of those cutters out a little bit too far? Well, yeah, I, I think that's that was the advantage of me being a rookie. I mean, there's there's not a lot of book on me. We knew what his bread and butter was. It was that cutter, and he liked to throw a high cutter. My favorite pitch was a high fastball up and away. So mm -hmm. it, that was an instance of maybe them not knowing my scouting report because he reinvented himself after that a little bit and started throwing that two-seamer. I didn't see many cutters from him after that. He started burying balls in on me. But uh, I guess I just think it was the advantage of me, him not really knowing me in that, mm -hmm. that instance. But it was definitely uh, a highlight of my career. Jay, first game back after 9-11, Liza Minnelli sings New York, New York, and then gives you an embrace and, and a kiss uh, after uh, she sings it on the on-deck circle. What did she say to you in that moment, and what was that like to experience? It really wasn't any words exchanged. It was just a surreal moment, really. I mean, I, I was the next guy. I was leading off the inning, so I happened to be – out there close to her and she got done singing the crowd's going crazy and she just kind of opened her arms and came towards me and I walked over and she gave me a big embrace and a big kiss and uh, I know like I said there was a lot of controversy about whether we should have played or not played but in hindsight that was probably one of the best decisions that, that we could have made for the city of New York to play that game because it just it really united everybody and brought everybody together.